Well, good evening, and thank you for joining us for SCC's Christmas production, Light Has Come. We hope that you'll laugh with us, that you'll cry with us, and that you'll sing with us uh, with every song that we sing tonight of praise to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to A Light Has Come. Welcome to the show. We can't wait to share with you all the hope and joy and anticipation. Because it's that time of year when we're all counting down to Christmas. Christmas is coming. <laughs> we love a good countdown, don't we? You hear someone start 10, 9, 8, 7, 7 6, 6, 5, 4, 4 3, wait, 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 wait. It isn't here yet. Well, what's not here? Christmas. Yes, but there's a glimmer of hope that something is about to happen, and interest is ignited. Oh, don't get me started again. Ten, nine, nine eight, eight, seven, seven six, six, five. You must wait. But why? Well, it's called timing. There's a perfect time for things to be revealed, hence the waiting. Oh, man, I hate waiting. It's like when your same-day Amazon Prime order doesn't come on the same day. <laughs> Tragic. Or when there's a really long line at the coffee stand and your car number 15. <laughs> <laughs> Devastating. But I'm talking about hundreds of years of waiting. Waiting in darkness. Waiting for the light to come. So, it's kind of like a stakeout. But actually, that's a pretty good description. Watching and waiting. Well, I'm gonna need a lot of coffee for that. And if I'm drinking a lot of coffee, I'm not gonna be able to hold it for hundreds of years. Also, I don't really like the dark. I get a little panicky. <laughs> well, I think our hundreds of years will move rather quickly tonight. Uh, but just in case, bathrooms are out this door and that door. Um, and here's the best news ever. There's no need to stay in the dark. Light is coming. Oh, let's see it unfold. Welcome to the show, Light Has Come. evening. Sometimes winter might best be titled the long dark. Don't you think? <laughs> it, it's dark when we go to work and it's dark before we get home. It's that time of year when we crave light. We love our Christmas lights, but oh, oh, that feeling that comes over us when, when a ray of sunshine washes across our face. Oh. We can feel that dark in here too, can't we? That place where we need the true light. You know, we're not the only ones. Throughout history, dark times have been an unfortunate companion. Imagine with me, just for a moment, a conversation that the prophet Isaiah might have had with God. So, 
This is what you want me to tell them? The people, your people, who've been in dark exile for, for many years, with, with their backs up against some Babylonian wall. When will the sorrow and sighing flee away? It, it was one thing when you had me tell King Ahaz that a virgin would give birth. But, oh, 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 a, a moment, my wife, she is mumbling in her sleep. Go back to sleep, my dear. Yes, yes, I know it is dark, and it is the middle of the night. I, I'm just talking with God. How should I know if he's listening? What do you mean, am I listening to him? Oh, oh you see what I mean, Lord? This is what I'm talking about. If my own wife questions me. Now, now you, you are God, almighty. You do things how you do things. But, but I am supposed to tell them that Messiah is just going to be a plain ordinary fellow like, like one of us who suffers and dies. <laughs> Why not a Moses to lead us out of exile? Or, or, or King David, the mighty warrior? Not a little baby. Oh, where is the oil for the lamp? Oh, you see, the Lord, this is what I'm talking about. We are a people in the darkness. Stumbling around, stubbing our toes on, on the sin of the world. We need a rescuer, a mighty savior. We need. Oh, 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 there it is. Oh, such a small flame. And, and yet, the room is, is full of light. Ooh, ooh. Dear God, I've said it before, and I will say it again. I am a man of unclean lips. Have mercy on me. Oh, come. Oh, come, Emmanuel and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. I, I will tell them, I will tell them everything you have shown me. Even if I don't understand it, I will trust you, God. Good Lord, in your own time, I know you will send Emmanuel. You will bring us light. You will bring us hope. Light and hope. It's coming. Rejoice. Rejoice. Emmanuel. Oh, ransom captive Israel.
And now, fast forward about 700 years, and still there is more waiting for God's light to shine. Here we find Elizabeth, the wife of Zechariah, the mother of John the Baptist, cousin of Mary, mother of Jesus. Elizabeth had been waiting and waiting for a child. And well, let's have her tell you about it. Well, you're no spring chicken. (laughs) That was the first thing my neighbor had said to me when I told her I was pregnant. Can you believe it? Maybe she just didn't believe me. But I don't hold it against her. Uh, She's been a tad cranky since she found a scorpion in her girdle drawer. (laughs) Maybe she just couldn't understand what a miracle this was for me. Zechariah and I, well, we had tried our whole lives to have a child of our own. By the time most of our hair had turned gray, we didn't hold out much hope. And honestly, our prayers felt heavy. But nothing is impossible with God. And as if that wasn't enough, the angel who had brought us this unbelievable news had more to say. This child, our son, would be used by God to prepare our people for the coming of the Messiah. And we were to name him John. It was all too much of a gift to be real. The angel told my husband, Zechariah, that our baby would be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he was born. And he would make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And then I thought, how in the world would we even begin to train a child for a job like that? Oh, but God had those details covered too. And it just keeps getting better. When I was about six months along, my cousin Mary had come for a visit. No sooner had she said hello than my unborn son had jumped and flipped inside me. Light recognizes light. Right then, God opened my eyes to clearly see that this young girl standing in our home was with child. And he would be called Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, the Light of the World. About nine months later, I had got the news that Mary's baby had been born in Bethlehem. I looked over at my husband, Zechariah, holding our own miracle baby, and I had one of those God moments. You know, when you say, God just had different plans. He had brought light and joy Our son John was a light that would tell of the true light coming. And then the Lord gave my husband, Zechariah, words about our son John that I will never forget. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High. And you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God by which the rising sun 
would come to us and shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide their feet into the path of peace. Light has come. Let the whole world rejoice. For in this child, light has come.
This one light has always been. At the start was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The life and light of men. Shining in the void. Destroying the darkness. The hope for the lost. This one light. Entering the world as a tiny child. Born in a manger. Wrapped in swaddling clothes. Heralded by angels. Worshipped by shepherds. Feared by kings. God in flesh. This one light. A carpenter by trade. Yet a miracle man. Making the blind see. The lame walk. The sick healed. Feeding the hungry. Speaking the truth. Loving the world. This one light. Son of man. Son of God. The lamb who takes away the sins of the world. Mocked. Scourged. Pierced. A crown of thorns placed on his head. Destined to die. A final breath, body hanging on a cross. A light extinguished for you and me. But this one light overcomes the darkness. The night cannot snuff out his power. He is resurrected. The stone rolled away. An empty tomb. A new covenant. A fulfilled prophecy. An eternal hope. This one light. Our Savior. He is power. He is grace. He is love. He is light. Wonderful counselor. Prince of peace. Almighty God. This one light. Three in one. And And one one in three. three. Light from light. True God from true God. Christ, the everlasting Savior, sent to earth to shine his glory in a dark world. This This one one light. God and was God, eternal truth and grace. The Word created everything, all in the heavens and the earth. There was not one thing that was created apart from Christ the Word. Oh, Jesus, Word of God, true light shines as the dawn, Son of God, Son of Man, the risen Lamb, sing out salvation song. Oh, Jesus, Word of God. True.
flood your weary soul Don't close your eyes in sin From death to death and life to life Salvation enters in To all receiving Him by faith That by His name we believe He gives the right to be sons and daughters For our dead souls redeemed Amen days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My father's God, and I will exalt him. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. So she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. He is our praise. He is our God who performed for us those great and awesome wonders we saw with our own eyes. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy, which will be to all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. I will proclaim the name of the Lord. Oh, praise the greatness of our God. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. A call to the Lord who is worthy of praise, and I am saved from my enemies. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. 
The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they'd seen and heard, which was just as they had been told. The Lord lives. Praise be to my rock. Exalted be God, the rock, my Savior. You will tell the people how they can find salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. Because of God's tender mercy, the morning light from heaven is about to break upon us. To give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide us to the path of peace. Light Light has has come. come. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of His hand. No ear may hear His. But in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. Light has come, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I just overheard someone quoting what I had written down. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. I am Luke, a disciple of Jesus Christ, and author of one of the four Gospels. You know, when I wrote my Gospel, I was mindful of the writings of Isaiah. The words of that towering prophet were always before me, how all of us like simple sheep, had gone astray. I kept reading that famous passage of Isaiah again and again after I heard the story from some of Jesus' first disciples about a parable that he had told. You know the one, a shepherd, who goes to look for that one lost sheep. Though he has 99 others already in the fold, he could not sleep, he could not eat, he could not go about any of his other important business until he had rescued the one. The story of that one lost sheep grabbed a hold of me and wouldn't let me go. Now, if sheep analogies aren't your thing, then perhaps you could consider a coin. You may be familiar with the story, a woman who loses a coin, one of 10, and then she sweeps her entire house looking for it. And when she finally finds the lost coin, probably under a couch cushion somewhere, she rejoices. 
Have you ever lost something, small or great, and experienced the stress of not knowing where it was? A ring, or some jewelry of special significance. A child in a busy marketplace. Panic and darkness prevent themselves. But then, what a relief when we finally find that which we feared would be lost forever. Let out a whoop of joy! He just told one other story about a lost son. You may be familiar with it. A father who had two sons, and the youngest came to him and asked for an advance on his inheritance, and then left home, seeking happiness by squandering that money on frivolous things and foolishness. But he found only emptiness and need. When he finally came to his senses, he turned toward home, planning to beg for a place in the household as a servant. But while he was still far off, his father ran to him, flung his arms around him, and welcomed him home. What a mystery to consider that God understands our fear of losing something precious because he doesn't want us to be lost in darkness forever in our sin. And even more incredible is this. Heaven is filled with that whoop of joy, a true party, whenever one lost in sin is found. Jesus came to this earth to seek and save that which was lost. We were what was lost. We are found in him. Jesus sees our lives as treasures, more valuable than a precious lost coin, so valuable that he was willing to come to us and willing to give his life in exchange for all that was lost. He came to give light to those who sit in darkness in the shadow of death and to guide us to the path of peace. Luke 1, Now, is that weird that I just quoted myself? <laughs> At any rate, once you've been given the light, by all means, don't hide it. As much as you can, share it with everyone who will listen. Right. This is awesome. Yeah, we're going to be able to see for miles. Well, actually, everyone around is going to be able to see for miles. We can all stop tripping in the dark now. We're like a lighthouse. Awesome. Up top. Uh, hey, can you tone that down a bit? You're going to blind me. Oh, we're sorry, I guess. Uh, don't you want to be able to see? Frankly, no. I like things the way they were before, <laughs> hidden. <laughs> Your light is seeping into every little dark crevice and I don't appreciate it. You know, there are just some things I don't want people to see. <laughs> Hold on, maybe we can try to make it not so right. Well, hurry up, you're offending me. You don't have the right to shine that light anywhere you want. It spreads, you know, it's, it's disturbing. <laughs> Can't you just turn that thing off? Uh, actually, it has long-lasting rechargeable batteries. <laughs> but, um, oh! How's this? Okay, maybe not. Uh, look, we're sorry. We thought people would like to be able to see. Can I ask why you want to slum around in the dark? None of your business. You just keep your light to yourself. <laughs> Oh, who put that there? <laughs> Good grief. Didn't expect that. I'm almost afraid to have others see this now. Me too. I mean, I don't want to upset anyone. Oh, mm. I have an idea. <gasps> okay, great idea. On three. One, two, three. Oh, it's dark out here. 
I thought I saw a light coming from this way. Ow! Oh, well, that hurt. Hey, is, is someone out there? Uh, yes. Who's there? Where are you? Did you see a light earlier? Uh, we're over here. Follow my voice. Whoa! 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 Whoa. Whoa. Are you okay? Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Jess. That's Aaliyah. Whoa. Are you good? Uh, yeah, I'm okay, thanks. Uh, I'm Karen. Um, what are you guys doing out here? Did you see a light earlier? I I've been trying to find it, but it seems to have gone out. Well, actually, we're trying to figure out what to do with it. With, with what, the light? You have the light? Um, yes. Uh, is it working? Well, of course. Well, well where is it? Under the trash can. Um, okay. Why? Well, we didn't want other people to see it. So, what you're saying is that you have a light that can help people see, but you don't want anyone to see it? Exactly. But we're all stumbling around in the dark. Yeah, that is a problem. Which way are you going anyway? Well, I don't know. It seems like I've been stumbling around in the dark forever. Mm -hmm. Ooh, how's this? Well, okay, but wouldn't it be better just to take the trash can off? I guess, but uh, we've heard it's too bright for some people. <laughs> well, look, I'm not telling you what to do, but if you had something that could save people from the dark, I don't think you should hide it. In fact, if we had more of these, we could drive away all of this darkness. That's brilliant! Remember the place we got these? They said they were having a huge surplus. They were just waiting for more people to use them. That's right! We could be super spreaders. <laughs> uh, of light! Uh, I mean of light! Oh, wow! Well, wow! Well, let's go! Show me the way! Uh, don't forget the light, though. Right. <laughs> oh, holy night. The stars are brightly shining It is the night of our dear Savior's birth Long lay the world in sin and error pine Till He appeared and the soul felt its worth Divine, oh, no. 
love the lights of Christmas, strung on trees, lining neighborhood houses, a tiny candle flame in a windowsill. They make me feel hopeful and always point my heart to the true and everlasting light, Jesus. Mary Magdalene, who lived when Jesus had his ministry on earth, became a follower of Christ, but only after he moved her out of darkness into light. My story is one of total darkness. You may have heard of it. To put it plainly, I was filled with evil spirits. No one could help me. No doctor, no priest, no prophet. I was in the darkest of places. My family had to put me in chains just to keep me from harming myself. Chains! It was shameful for all of us. It was terrifying for everyone, but especially for me. The anguish, the blackness of sorrow. Talk about sitting in the presence of my enemies. What was happening to my body, to my soul? What did this say about my family? And then... I met Jesus, and he set me free. One demon after the other came out of my body, out of my soul, freed. Jesus said, I have come into the world as light so that whoever believes in me shall not remain in darkness. And so I became a child of light, redeemed, restored, my mind was freed. My eyes that had been shut in with sin were opened with true light. 
My future was suddenly bright. My heart no longer bound up by shame. I could now serve Jesus and walk in his ways. Walk physically beside the Messiah. Follow him from glory to glory. I also followed him through his dark places. Betrayed by a friend. Hated by crowds. Falsely accused. He was beaten and crucified and then buried in a tomb. It all seemed dark again. But it didn't stay that way. He rose from the dead, light and life to all he brings. Mary could probably stay here all evening and share. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Christ, whose glory fills the skies, Christ, the everlasting light, Son of righteousness, arise and triumph o'er these chains of mine. And come thou fullness of your love and loose this heart bound up by shame and I will never be the same so here I wait in hope of you all my soul's longing through and through and day spring from on high be near and a star in my heart appears and, and dark and she this is the morn until your love in me is born and joyless is the evening song until Emmanuel has come. Whose glory fills the skies 
Christ, the everlasting light, Son of righteousness, arise and triumph o'er these chains of mine. Remind me why you brought us out here for a walk. It's kind of dark and cold. I know. We'll go in soon, and y'all can have your hot chocolate. And we'll watch a movie with Grandpa, right? Yes, family tradition. But I wanted you to see this first. See what? What? Ow! Ow! <laughs> Look! I don't see anything. Me either. Up. Oh. Whoa. Amazing, isn't it? I don't think I've ever seen stars like this. See how it sparkles? I miss this about when it was your family, the family farm when we're not in town. Is it's it so, always like this? On clear nights, winter is best. Isn't it beautiful? It's like some of the games on my phone, only this feels really real. Like, really real. Well, it is really real. When I was your age, we didn't have smartphones. We had to use our imaginations a little bit more. Yeah, and you had to walk up in the snow both ways to school. Did you bring us out here just to get us to turn off our phones? Well, no, but I'm not sad you did. So what would you imagine? You know, eons ago when you were a kid? Like, way back in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> well... I would wander these fields, wondering about what everyone saw up in the sky on the night that Jesus was born. I guess you could say, I wondered as I wandered. Uh, <laughs> is that a stab at a bad dad joke? It's not as bad as a joke at dinner time. Okay, what did one angel say to the other? Hey, hello there. <laughs> but seriously, I really did wonder as I wandered. I didn't have Google Maps to tell me where to go. That's true, and neither did the shepherds or wise men. No Siri, no apps, no smartphones. So, so how would they know where to go? Well, how did any of us know where to go before Siri? At least at Christmas, it must have been some bright star. That's right, pointing the way to the brightest and best. You mean Jesus? Yes. You know what else I would do when I was a kid out here? Do we have a choice on whether or not you're going to tell us? <laughs> so, can you hear the thump of hoofbeats as all the world powers rush towards Bethlehem? Angels and soldiers, shepherds and kings, some to worship and some to destroy a little child. The darkness did not like the light. I don't suppose it did. But really, you thought about all that as a kid? Well, maybe not all of that, but I'm thinking about it now as we're all here together. You know, it's good to get lost in the miracle of Christmas. No smartphones needed. You know what I'm thinking about? Well, what's that? That little child they went to see, born in a little town, wrapped in swaddling clothes. You said not everyone wanted him to be born. His light could have been snuffed out like a little candle. Yeah, like poof. But turns out, his light shines brighter than any of these stars. Like you said, the brightest and best. That's right. And here we are all talking about it together. Dad, our phones have Bible apps, you know. <laughs> well, thank the Lord for technology. You know, I think we should make this another one of our Christmas traditions. I agree. Hey, there you guys are. Shut up. Hey, Dad, Grams is wanting to hear us sing Brightest and Best before the movie starts. And Mom's got a big crock pot of hot cocoa ready and waiting. Is it okay if we use our smartphone flashlights to get us back to the house? Otherwise, you'll be sorry. <laughs> oh, no! Has Dad already unleashed his Christmas puns? Oh, yeah. You know it. Well, after all, it is the most 
wonderful time of year. Uh, here we go. <laughs> okay, what was good King Wenceslas's favorite kind of pizza? Deep, Deep pan crisp and even. <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 what is the duck's favorite Christmas carol? In the beak midwinter. <laughs> or, 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 what did the wise men say after they offered up their gifts of gold and frankincense? But wait, there's myrrh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and that's just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> Dad, if we don't leave now, we'll be an icicle boat for two. Mom's texting. She says the hot cocoa is calling. We should definitely get some before we're on the best in snow out here. Uh. <laughs> <sighs> I forgot how clear the stars are out here. They are a gift for sure. Every good, perfect gift comes down from above, from the Father of lights, with whom there is no shadow or variation due to change. Including Jesus, the brightest and best. The brightest and best. Hey, you blessed born, see the great mediator down from the regions of glory descend. Shepherds go worship the babe in a manger. Lo, for a guard, the bright angels attend. Say, shall we yield him in costly devotion? Fragrance of and best of sons of the morning dawn on our darkness and let us thy name star in the east the horizon adorning guide where our infant redeemer was laid each ample oblation vainly with gifts would his favor secure richer by far is the heart's adoration dearer to God are the prayers of the poor brightest and best of sons of the morning are shining, low lies his head with the peace of the star. Angels adore him in slumber reclining, wise men and shepherds before him do fall. Wise men and shepherds before him do fall. Was laid, brightest and best. 
adorning guide where our infant redeemer was laid guide where our infant redeemer was It's Christmas, and it's that time of year to figure out what I should do for Christmas gifts. My mom always seems to know what everyone needs, but me, I'm like, do you like books? Or how about a coffee gift card? Or how about me committing to cleaning out the garage? I mean, I, I'm only 13 years old. How should I know what people need or want? Also, I probably can't afford it. If only there were a giant light that pointed me to the perfect gifts. Yeah, like the Bethlehem star. And that would be awesome. But all I have is a bag full of promises and a few coins. I mean, what can God do with that? There is another young person that might have some words of wisdom. He only had a few fish and some bread. Ever since I was young, I've always loved the story of David. And something that always stood out to me was when he went to help his brothers. He went to the front lines of battle when Israel was fighting the Philistines. You've heard the story, how Goliath was intimidating our soldiers and mocking the tribes of Israel. Jesse sent his youngest son, David, with some cheese and bread to bring lunch to his brothers. He'd hoped David would come back with a report and a token from the front to show Israel would survive the giant. So, off David went with his lunch and his faith in God. Well, you know the rest of the story. So, wherever I go, I come prepared. With food, just like my hero David. And, who knows, maybe I'll encounter a foe or slay a giant. And my ticket to the front lines of battle will be my basket of food, just like David. So, the day I went to hear Jesus in the crowds was the same. I went, as was my habit, with a packed lunch. You gotta understand, Jesus created a sensation in those days wherever he went. You were lucky if you could get a seat near him. Up close, to see the expression on his face when he called out the Pharisees or told a joke. Man, he could be funny. <laughs> so, we all hurried for the best spot in the crowd. Hurried to get to the front so we could be near him. I don't blame everybody for not remembering to bring food. They were in a hurry because maybe if they got to the front of the line, he'd see them. Maybe he'd reach out and touch them answer a need, heal their sickness. Everything Jesus touched, he brought light to, like transformed. For me, that day, it was my lunch. He took five loaves and two fish, and he transformed it into a feast for thousands. Talk about trusting the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. I hope God would use my lunch to slay a giant one day, and instead, he took a little bit of food, and he fed an enormous crowd. It was unbelievable, as in hard to believe, except over 5,000 people saw it. It was like a great light shone over the whole crowd, and all that from my sad little lunch.
I guess we'll never know what the Lord will do with our little bits and pieces and use them to shine his light to others. Maybe it's less important how much I have and more important that Jesus can transform it. Maybe my little bag of promises and a few coins will have an unbelievable result. Thank you for waiting. We hope we didn't keep you too long. Oh, it's no trouble. I would have waited all day for the chance to make this pitch. That's what we like to see. Enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is scoring big with 52% of women under 60 this year. Well, Miss... Uh... Oh, feel free to use my first name. Oh, ah, uh, Evelyn. <laughs> Just call me Eve. Eve. <laughs> Easier to spell. Fits better on a marquee, Eve. Well, Eve, what's your pitch? Only the most unbelievable story ever told. <laughs> We've heard that before. <laughs> no, really. This is definitely quite unbelievable. Picture it. Bethlehem, manger interior. Circa 4 BCE to 6 CE, depending on your archaeological timeline. A north star. Spotlights an infant boy using a trough for a crib. Sounds of livestock and shepherds underscore two proud parents. Sounds quaint, but most audiences prefer a little action after the opening credits. Hmm. Fast food tie-ins don't sell themselves. 71% <laughs> of males between 18 and 33 prefer either genetically modified dinosaurs or exploding samurai robots. Oh. Preferably exploding genetically modified robot dinosaurs with lightsabers. But this baby barely escaped being murdered by a despotic king. Go on. And the reason that the despotic king wanted to murder this baby and murdered all babies under the age of two in his kingdom was because this baby was prophesied to rule not just over the despotic king's kingdom, but the entire world. This baby is the king of kings. King of kings? Hmm, sounds a smidge patriarchal. Uh, tracking shows that only 24% of females between 9 and 13 purchase t-shirts printed with images of kings, princes, or bears wearing hats. But he's not that kind of king. Flash forward 30 years, and instead of conquering and ruling, this king is teaching and healing and performing miracles. This king heals the sick, and he even raises the dead to give his followers hope. Oh, hope is big this year. Oh, especially with children ages four to seven. <laughs> you said he was a teacher. What sort of things did he teach? that people should comfort and serve one another, that we should feed the poor and heal the sick, and that anyone who believes in him can have a place in his kingdom. Anyone? Hmm. What about people who steal your parking space at the mall the day before Christmas? Anyone. What about people that don't mark their spoilers when discussing movies on social media networks? Anyone. What about the anyone? Even people that talk on their cell phones in the movie theater. Even people that put up their Christmas decorations in the middle of October. <laughs> anyone. Liars, thieves, murderers, producers. Yes, anyone can have a place in the kingdom. Sounds promising. Hmm. I smell syndication rights. <laughs> well, everyone is fa showing favorable figures towards anyone during the last several fiscal cycles. 
So, Eve, you're saying that uh, the boy becomes a king, the king spreads the good news of the kingdom, and it's uh, happily ever after. Uh, Roll credits uh, hit a sequel, yes? Not quite. You see, not everyone approves of the kingdom. Even the king has enemies. They try to persecute him and silence the good news and even prevent our king from healing and saving his followers. Finally, they condemn him to death. They crucify the king. Ooh, not so happily ever after. Mm, I can see why you're having trouble finding backers. <laughs> Sad endings many win awards, but you can't sell action figures with awards. <laughs> oh, no, it doesn't end there. After he dies, after his followers abandon him, after it seems as if history will never remember all the wonderful things the king said and did for the world, he comes back. He fakes his death to get revenge. Um, no, he didn't fake his death, and he's not really interested in revenge. Hmm, they, they killed the wrong king? Ooh. No, he really died in a brutal and lonely way. Oh, I get it. He comes back as this see-through blue ghost and gives advice to the next king. (laughs) No, he comes back and he's alive. And his followers even touch the wounds in his hands to show that he died. He comes back and proves to his followers that the kingdom can't be destroyed by height or depth or principality or anything. The kingdom will live so long as the king has followers that believe. He even forgives everyone who abandoned him, even the people who murdered him and his followers to prove that he's the king. I see. This could be big. (laughs) Genetically modified robot samurai dinosaur big. I hope so. Uh, Eve, when can we start pre-production? Really? (laughs) Thank you so much. This is going to be such a blessing, I promise. (laughs) All that's left is to calculate the price of admission. (laughs) Admission? Oh, yes, Miss Angelus. You see, uh, what are we going to charge to see this uh, unbelievable story of yours? We can't charge admission. We can't charge anything. This isn't just my story, it's everyone's story. And everyone needs to hear it at any cost. (laughs) But that is preposterous. You can't build a theme park on free admission. I mean, think of the customized promotional cell phone cases. Will someone think of the customized promotional cell phone cases? (sighs) I need some air. I think there's been a misunderstanding, Miss Angeles. You see, in this business... I, I think I understand. And you're right, this story has value. It's the most valuable story anyone can hear. But because of that value, people deserve to hear it, whoever and wherever they are. I'm, I'm sorry I wasted your time. Oh, oh don't be sorry, Miss Angeles. Please, call me Eve. Well, Miss Evangelist, uh, it really is a great story, and I hope you get to tell it someday. Perhaps a more grassroots method. Um, Word of mouth, maybe? Good luck with that. (laughs) Mm. Thank you all again. Gone. All that advertising revenue. Gone. Cereal box toys, gone graphic novel adaptations, gone, gone, gone. It could have been something really special. Oh, don't feel too bad. Uh, A benevolent and forgiving king, uh, miraculous healing, raised from the dead, uh, established an everlasting kingdom. Who would ever buy a story like that? It's too good to be true. It really is unbelievable. Mm. Come and see the inconceivable 
and believe the unbelievable. God has come to dwell with us. Begotten Son, born into Adam's birth, promised one, fulfilling ancient words. God has come to dwell with us. Who could ever know the depths of the mystery of Our minds can't take it in, Lord, our hearts are filled with praise. He will heal the unhealable, He will save the unsavable. God has come to dwell with us. Heaven's joy will drink our bitter cup, emptied out as He is lifted up. God has come to dwell with us. Who could ever know the depths of the mystery of Your grace? Our minds can't take it in, Lord, our hearts are filled with praise. Lord, we're lost in overwhelming awe at the thought of such amazing love. God has come, God has come. God has come to dwell with us. Who could ever know the depths of the mystery of your grace? Though our minds can't take it in, Lord, our hearts are filled with praise. Who could ever know the depths of the mystery of your grace though our minds can't take it in Lord our hearts are filled with praise come and see the inconceivable and believe the unbelievable God has come to dwell with us.
Thank you for coming to join us tonight for Light Has Come. Don't you love a good story? Don't you hate it when, when a good story is, is over? And we know we can't keep on going tonight because the cookies are waiting, and I know you want them, especially you right there. Have you ever watched a movie and you get to the end and it's been so good and the credits start rolling, and you're just, you're just waiting for that scene, right? The scene after the credits to tell you that there's, that there's more, more coming. Well, it's a similar to the stories that you've heard tonight and the stories of Christmas. I wonder if you're here tonight and, and you actually think that that's just the, the end of the story. In other words, that it's just going to be Christmas over and over and over again forever. Maybe you're a Grinch and you're like annoyed every year that it's Christmas. It's just Christmas again and again and again. You're probably not here if, if you're one of those. But if you are, kudos to whoever brought you. <clears throat> or maybe you, you just love Christmas. It's what you look forward to every year. It's your favorite time of year. And yet for both, you could just think that, that Christmas is just, it's just what happens every year and it's just going to go on uh, forever and ever. And yet... You see, there is, there's, there's more to the story. People throughout history have been thinking, oh, that this just is gonna go on forever and ever until the earth finally runs out, till the sun burns up and we all just die. But there's so much more to the story that is yet to come. I wanna read to you from 2 Peter tonight as we, as we close out the evening. 2 Peter 3, 4 through 9, he says, they will say, where is the promise of his coming? In essence, yeah, Christmas is just going on and on, right? It's just going on forever. Jesus is not ever coming back. He says, he goes on to say, for ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. This is, this is what people say. It's just going on and on. And they deliberately overlooked the fact, Peter says, that the heavens existed long ago. The earth was formed out of water and through water by the word of God. And that by means of these, the world that then existed was deluged with water and perished. He's talking about the flood. The flood that happened over 4,000 years ago. Because you see, people back then were saying, oh no, it's just going to keep on going forever and ever. And yet, God gave them the ark and only those who were in the ark were, were saved because it wasn't just going on forever and ever. He goes on to say, but the same word that heavens and the earth that now exist are stored up for fire being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. This is not some cryptic key to you know, figuring out Old Testament times or prophetic periods of time in the future. He's saying God is above time. He's not like us. He's looking over all of creation and all of time with his perfect story, and he is coming again for his own, for those that are in Jesus Christ. He goes on finally to say, the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. So friends, tonight, if you have been thinking that life is just going to keep going on and on, it's not. There's a sovereign God over all this. He sent his son, Jesus, who came as a baby, who lived 2,000 years ago, who died on the cross for our sins, and the next thing is him returning for us for those who are in Jesus Christ. And so we encourage you tonight, put your faith in Jesus. Get in that ark, right? Get in to Jesus Christ. He gave himself for you. He loves you. He is calling to you tonight. Would you listen to him? Would you receive him as your Lord and Savior? We're gonna sing one, one final song together tonight. And if you know Jesus as your Savior, Sing this out, this Christmas alleluia. Sing praise to God for giving his son. And tonight, maybe, if you have not put your faith in Jesus Christ, Christ yet, that you 
would sing hallelujah for the first time. Praise the Lord for giving you his son. Would you stand with us? Jesus, that you came for us, that you loved us, you saw us, you have planned all of time to tell the greatest story, that we needed a Savior, that you, that you wanted us, you wanted us as sons and daughters, 
And you have plans to lavish your grace upon us for all eternity. Oh, that we would receive Jesus Christ and his work on the cross. I pray tonight, God, that anyone here who has yet to put their faith in you, I pray that tonight would be the night that they would receive the gift of eternal life, the free gift through Jesus Christ. They don't have to do anything to earn it. They simply just say yes to you and receive what you have provided. We love you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for Christmas. We worship and glorify you. It's in your name we pray, amen.